Okay, Roger once again, voice of Mud Fossil University, and today we are continuing on with the gold series, getting a little more in-depth. Um, previously, I explained um, where gold is easily found, and it does collect in the arterial network, primarily in creatures that die and are preserved in mud into the mud fossilization process and then they become a complete creature that is semi stabilized in water conditions in wet conditions either in literally floating in water suspended in water their feet stuck in the mud suspended in water they begin, the, 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 the dead tissues begin to exchange their volatile contents with the water that surrounds it. At that point, the tissues begin to stabilize and they begin to uh, mineralize. Now, there are things in the blood that settle out because they're no longer being pumped through the blood doing their job. Gold is one of them. Silver, copper, all these things. And that's where every one of that stuff comes from. It doesn't come out of stars. It might have at some point, but this, this, that's not where this stuff comes from. Now, this is gold. And gold settles to the lowest part of the arterial network in creatures when they die. The blood settles down to the lowest parts and it blows out all of the volatile stuff and the heavy metals and minerals settle. And that, the gold goes way deep. This is actually gold that has collected and it forms, you see these, you see that hexagon shape and all these different cube shapes? That's what happens with all the metals and crystals. They, they form... Um, angular blocks and some of them are squares and triangles and well you can see all the different formations not flat planes but they 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 work uh, sort of what they call you know just just go think of crystals all right so now what is all this other stuff well that is literally the blood that's the bodily fluids most of the red portion of the blood, the ferrous oxides, have gone, and it's been replaced primarily by silicates, quartz silicates, and that's why they always find gold with quartz, because it pumps the blood out, and as the, the uh, metals sink, the blood's washed away uh, most of the time. Sometimes it comes out very red, and uh, that's the ochre, and uh, sometimes it's just washed away, and mostly what you're left with is little films of red. Now, not only is the films of red, anybody that knows about mud fossils knows about the black. And we have the black as well. Here's the vein stuff. Okay, because the vein comes on black. So, here's your dark stuff. And I believe that's the vein right there. And then they bubble off as they the tissues sort of um, start to collect as it settles. And I believe this was one little blood vessel area. And uh, you see other ones here. But I believe that, see, there's another area where I'm sure there was blood vessels, and then it comes up and you get your dark and you, you're red. And that's what everybody that's following the mud fossils understands this. Now, and you can see it's very intricate, and these are, uh, whoops. Uh, anyway, that's mercury. Now, let's go back out of the periodic chart. The, if, if you understand chemistry, and you really should, you really, really should, and it's not that hard. It really isn't. They make it sound hard in school, but it's not hard. Um, here's gold right here. You see that? I was on the gold. Now, what's the difference between all of these? It just means you put another block, another block, another block, another block. You're adding another nuclear particle to each one of these. And as you do that, they grow and grow and grow in size. And what happens to that? It means they become more and more stable uh, to a certain point. And then they get into uranium and all that, and they become unstable. But these become more and more heavy and, and, and dense and and, and um, solid as they grow in their their um, atomic structure more and more mass so let's go up to gold and the gold is um, 79 All right. and what that see now this here that was what we were looking at before in that very um, 
close-up picture. And, and uh, that is the articulation of different little blood vessels. They're all over the place in your body. And I'll show you another one, a big one that collects. And they collect in the veins, uh, in the, uh, I'm sorry, in the um, arterial, it's called a calcaneus um, arterial branches in the, in the heel. And that's, and, and giants were standing up, drowned in the mud, their heels are stuck in the mud, the tendinous portion of their legs are sticking up, and they are the plateaus, literally the plateaus. And below that, Devil's Tower, same thing, that is a foot. Um, and that the, the bottom of it, you can see the actual calcaneus um, arterial branches as red ochre, little round spots. That's just a fact. I'm sorry, that's what it is. And as they stand there in that drowning, wet environment, the normal transition metals that are continuously being pumped through your body, doing their job of delivering this and picking up that oxygen and glucose and minerals and uh, food and all kinds of things, um, they no longer move. They settle. That's how gold gets found. Anyway, there's all kinds of, you should really get into chemistry if you're not, because this is, if you don't understand chemistry, you're never, ever, 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 ever going to understand life. You just can't. You have to understand the way chemistry is involved in every single detail of every single thing there is. It's all atomic, and it's all the interaction between the nuclear and the electron, uh, electrons. Once you understand that, it doesn't get all that complicated. It really doesn't. But you got to get that concept first. And MFU can get you that concept without trying to confuse you. All right? By the way, don't tell me there's no giant feet because there's one right here. Now, this foot, as you can see, has still a lot of the red um, fleshy stuff on it, which is very rare. That's, uh, normally, um, you end up with those tendon fibrils, those little hex fibrils like you see on uh, Devil's Tower. But on Devil's Tower, they're all gone to up about here, which is the abrupt transition. And this will eventually do that, and all that stuff will go away and become like the foreground here. Now, in the Devil's Tower, the heel comes in the back just like this, only all this stuff is eroded away, and you can see all the fibrils, and they come up, and they come up just like somebody patched them in like you see <laughs> very strange and then you'll see the little red dots in the back which are the arter arterial branches and I'll show you that in a second. Alright these are the, the tendon fibrils and these big straps come down and the, they ended up with these little tiny fibrils you see these are all these hex shapes and that's what happens and that's what you're going to see on Devil's Tower it erodes all the fleshy stuff and you end up with these these um, hex and there, there are CaCl3, which is calcium carbonates and different little minerals and things, and there's some little metals in there, little particulates here and there. But primarily uh, limestone, CaCl3. And, and they call it basalt. They have all kinds of different names for it. And they think it's from some kind of uh, volcanic... Um, I don't know what they think. But the reason that that, that that is separated in those hex tubes is because they're just like this, and what's around them is fascia. The fascia keeps them separated in your life. It keeps them separated when you're dead, too. All right, this might be a little tricky to see, but this is the abrupt transition right here. And when I say abrupt, I mean that thing is as flat as a pancake. And you start out, if you look at the top of Devil's Tower, you're going to see all these wavy-looking things at the top. That is where the abrupt transition starts to be stressful, and this is where it breaks. So you look at the top of Devil's Tower, you're going to see all these little wrinkles, and at the top is as flat as a pancake. And literally all of these things are made out of blocks. They're not made out of continuous straps. You don't see them, but there's seams in here, and if you crack them, they'll pop right into the little blocks, and that's how they made the pyramids. They didn't make them building them up. They built them down. They took the pieces from above and came down. That's my statement. And every one of them has water coming up through the bottom because they have arterial passageways because they were built on tendons and they all have arteries running down the tendons. So that's just what I'm considering a fact. All right, this is again, that's that calcaneus bone that I'm talking about. And it comes down and it feeds it and that's where you're going to find the blood, uh, gold. This is the abrupt transition. That's what you see. That's the top of these 
of uh, Devil's Tower. That's the top of all of these plateaus. They were feet. There was 409,000 giants, it was written. 409,000. So that means 818,000 feet. But let's take 400,000 creatures. And these were just the people. Now, I guess they ate everything else there was. So I, guess, I don't think there was anything else left but people. So, and then it turned into a bloodbath, and I mean, it's all written about, and it seems to be exactly what they say happened, it seems to have, have happened. This is exactly what you see, it's Achilles tendon. Distal means the furthest away from the body, so that's the end where you saw that calcanus looking thing. This, these are the fibers, these are the fibers that run right up the side of Devil's Tower. And right here, you can almost see it, right there there's a little wrinkle, that's the abrupt transition. And if this was sticking straight up, it would have broke right off there, exactly straight across. And I'll show you the anatomical um, information about that. Okay, this is what they, uh, they call a uh, ram's horn. And normally they find these in silver, but they, this is in gold as well. And you see the architecture of this, you see this spin and this little thing here. I'm going to tell you what this is in a second. But this is, you will find these in the calcanus arterial branches of giant feet that are stuck in the mud and the blood has drifted to the bottom and this is what you will find as it ends up hitting the bottom of the blood vessels that are in this branch hold on one second all right you saw what I just showed you was the arterial branch coming down this comes across, you get these little tiny tags here. And what happens in the calcanus arterial branches is it comes down and it fills up and it collects right here and clogs it right off like a clog in your drain. And that is where all the gold settles because it's a direct pathway from the all the way down your body, I'll show you. All right, here's where you're going to be looking. The calcaneal branch is right there. You see? This is what I showed you before, the calcanus tendon. See, calcaneal tendon, calcaneal tendon. That's your heel. Down here comes the blood, you see it? And it comes down and underneath and it goes out to service the front of the foot. Well, just think of what happens in gravity. This, the arteries are open, first of all. Remember this, arteries don't have any, any uh, restrictions to them. And these are big arteries. They come down and off of them is running these, all these little things coming this way and that way and this way and that way to feed the tissues here and then the veins after they feed the tissues with this nice good artery blood the veins will suck it right up back to your heart and lungs to get more oxygen so it can come back again it's a continuous loop now so it's continuing around 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 you've got ferrous oxides your iron oxygen is bringing your oxygen down with the hemoglobin and so forth picking up carbon dioxide doing this and that all kinds of action bringing down and picking up things that's your body is a chemical reactor now you're dead Tip. case closed no more so everything stops and says well what do i do now well everybody says well try to find somebody you can pair up with and get stable so Gold says, well, I don't pair up with anybody but myself. And he says, well, you just drop down to the bottom and just stay out of the way. So, and that's where you get that little branch. You see, remember you saw that little ram's horn? That's what it is. So, go digging around with where they have these little things sticking up out of the ground, these fibrils. And look, now you have, you know, you know as much as I know about it now. And I, I have my own reasons for doing this. So, I want people to go around and look for gold if they want. Or don't look for it. Do whatever you want. But this is where it is. The takeaway here is that is the um, fibula which sits alongside of the tibia which is your leg bone. This has no anchor point, it falls right off. And I'll show you how it does it in the feet that we find. Alright, this uh, right here what you're looking at is a, a, what we call a noto. It's a new species of hominid that's not been uh, examined yet. And you notice right here, that's where that tibia, I mean uh, the fibula, fibula, attaches. Well, it doesn't attach, it just falls off, that's why. You'll see, all, they'll always have this one side will be lopped off. And that's the side 
Oops, you can't see that. On the, uh, that's the outside side of your foot. So this would be a left hand foot, a left foot of the guy. Standing this way, and that's the, the attachment of the non-attachment of the fibula. Right here is the bone that is the uh, tibia and attaches right there. And this little black stuff, that's what they call bone black. And anywhere you see this, that's blood leaking out. You see right there? You look at your own foot and you've got a vein that runs right across there, exactly the same. And these don't have any toes inside. I mean, there's toes inside. Cut them open and there's toes in there, but they're not. They, they, this is actually the way the foot is designed and built. And it actually has its own soul built right into it. I mean, it's very, very strange. And uh, uh, another researcher just found some that have the toes eroded. And you can see right into where the toes are. Uh, and there's a lot of them. I mean, we have literally hundreds of these. So there's a lot to, disc to, 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 um, to uh, you know, examine here. It's not just silly stuff. And this, that's the foot. Look at, see? That's how your foot is. You look at your foot. It's identical to that. Identical, except you got toes sticking on. And, you know, and these are blocky, big blocky things. Huge feet. And there was more here to this, too. This was also had a pad that runs under. The whole thing was like this originally one time. Uh, and that's how they invest in the bottom. There's a little tab that's, and, and uh, the ones that uh, Tish found are, are uh, fully eroded to a point where you can really examine the internal structure. So anyway, the, this is what I'm getting at. Is that's the, a fibula that falls right off the side. It doesn't have any attachment at all to speak of. And this is the calcaneus heel right there. And that's the calcaneus tendon run down. And there'll be an arterial blood supply that runs right down there. That's the way it works. Okay, this is the money shot, as they say. I don't know if you can see that, but that little tiny red dot at the bottom there. You see where my pencil tip is? Right there. And this is the calcaneus tendon. See, remember I told you that the side falls right off? This is a guy's left foot. And this would have come down and wrapped right around, and, and the ball of the foot, the, the calcaneus area, is in the ground. It's, it's buried in the mud, and that is the abrupt transition. There's your little wrinkly stuff at the abrupt transition, the stress area. And there'll be an arterial passageway, I believe it's right there. And inside of this network, it will come down and feed those calcaneus branches and the gold will be down there. All right, at some point I discussed the um, abrupt transition and the wrinkly zone at the top of the abrupt transition. These are the fibrils that come down. And see they're snapped off here and there. They, you could actually take these and snap them and in, 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 uh, that's just the way they work. They're, they're, um, these are the tendon fibrils, and they're separated due to the fact that fascia had coated them in life, and it still coats them in, uh, in the death process, and they stay separated for that reason. Now I'm going to show you where, the, uh, where you can go find your gold.